Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel where I talk about pretty much anything that interests me, whether that be true crime, commentary, even beauty products, it's whatever right now, we're just going with the flow. Today we are talking about a very, very famous missing persons case, and this case is interesting specifically because it got really famous due to the footage that was released of this person right before they went missing. It was one of these cases of a very, very normal person suddenly changing their behavior, acting very, very off-putting and different, and then going missing. And that off-putting part was caught on camera and released. Due to how viral the footage has gone on YouTube, this man is actually known as the most famous missing person from YouTube. He has still, to this day, never been found. Let's get into it. The man that we are talking about today goes by the name of Lars Metank. He was born February 9th, 1986 in Berlin, Germany. Lars was a very nice, simple person. He loved his parents. He actually took care of his dad once they got older because his dad had a stroke. He had a long-term girlfriend and he also worked at a power plant. He had lots of friends and all around was just a solid, consistent, good person. Lars was 28 years old whenever he was vacationing at a seaside resort called Golden Sands with five of his close friends. This trip was his first time ever out of the country Germany. This trip was in a city called Varna in Bulgaria. His friends reported that he was in a good, relaxing, and happy mood during the trip. They did pretty much what any group of late 20 year old men would do on vacation. They relaxed on the beach, swam in the pools, played football, went clubbing, all around had a good solid man trip. You know what I'm saying? The only odd behavior that was ever reported about Lars on this trip was that he didn't necessarily eat a lot whenever they all went out and ate. Whenever the rest of the friends got an entree, typically Lars would just get a little side salad or a small bowl of soup and that was it. That is something worth reporting. I do have to say that literally could be due to anything. Me personally, if I'm stressed out in any type of way, I don't eat a lot. I also don't eat a lot if I'm sometimes in a new location just due to like, I just have a lot of anxiety. So I don't know, you know, he could have anxiety about the fact that he'd never been out of the country before. Maybe he was scared to try the food. Maybe someone was like, oh, you're gonna get sick from trying food out of the country. Any of that, you know, there could be a lot of reasoning to why he was just kind of nibbling. Or he could just have, in general, a small appetite. You never know. Regardless, as I said, this was something that was worth reporting. And in a situation like this, it's better to have more information than no information. This trip had pretty much happened. It was at the end of the trip, the day before they flew fly back and the group decided that they wanted to go out clubbing one last time. They were all at a bar just having drinks, chilling out when the conversation of football came up. Lars and a group of men had a pretty big disagreement about football. Personally, I do not know that much about football. I know it is a huge, huge deal. I also know that people are very, very, very loyal to their teams. I have also heard of the very infamous fights that have broken out from this. I know that there is a lot of tension surrounding football. This is kind of a situation that became very, very intense and had a lot of tension. Lars had a different opinion than this group of men. After this disagreement, Lars actually separated from his friends and disappeared for the night, which was definitely very odd. I honestly don't know what his friends did. I don't know if they went out looking for him. I don't know if they just thought maybe he he found somewhere else to sleep. I really don't know. There's not a whole lot of information about this specifically, but I do know that his friends didn't see him until the following morning. Now, the following morning, he showed back up to his friends and had told him about how these men had hired four other men to basically beat him up because of this disagreement that happened the night before. This resulted in Lars having an injured jaw and a ruptured eardrum. Now, the ruptured eardrum specifically was the injury that was worse in the sense of that ruptured eardrum kept him from being able to fly home. Because if you have a ruptured eardrum, whenever you fly, the pressure changes and that can cause serious damage to your ear. Lars actually went to a 
a doctor to have this just double checked out and the doctor strongly advised that he stayed in Bulgaria for a night or two and let it heal before he flew back just to avoid any permanent damage. The doctor prescribed him the antibiotic Cefrozil. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. Lars's friends wanted to stay with him because they didn't want their friend to be alone and injured in this foreign country, especially this is the first time he's ever been out of the country. They wanted to stay an extra day or two with him to provide him company, friendship, companionship, all of that. But Lars insisted that they stuck to their original plan and flew home. He didn't want to be a burden. He didn't want to have to make them all change their plans and their families have to see them a day or two later, them having to put a day or two more off of work or whatever. He just wanted them to be able to catch their flight home like normal. I'm sure he felt like he had gotten himself in that situation in the first place. He didn't want everyone else to have to pay the consequences. Not that it's his fault that he got beat up or anything, but I just could see myself feeling that way in that specific set of circumstances. The next day on July 7th, the group went ahead and checked out of the resort. They went their separate ways. All of the friends went and flew back to Germany while Lars found a hotel that was right near the airport. It was a very, very cheap hotel called Hotel Color Varna. He got a room for one night and this was pretty much where he was going to stay just to hill up. It was after his friends left and whenever he was all alone that his behavior really started to change. This was kind of kicked off by him calling his mother randomly and whispering to her that people were trying to kill him or rob him and that she needed to cancel all of his credit cards immediately. I'm not quite sure what his mother's reaction was. I'm sure it was one of shock, but this was reported and this was pretty much the start of his very, very odd behavior. After this, the hotel security cameras caught Lars wandering up and down the halls repeatedly. He was also showing very paranoid behavior. He was looking out windows, kind of looking behind him, looking around, acting as if he was making sure no one was following him. Very, very paranoid. At one point, he had even hid in an elevator. Around 1 a.m., Lars left the hotel for around an hour before he returned. We don't know why he left, and we also don't know what he did when he was gone during this time. That following morning on July 8th, he called his mother again to tell her that people had been chasing him and that they were getting closer. His flight back home was scheduled this day and she just told him that he needed to get to the airport and fly home and everything will be fine if he could just get home. Despite his fears that people were following him, he was able to get his luggage and make his way to the airport. But while he was at the airport, you could definitely tell that he still thought people were following him and just as he was doing at the hotel in the airport he is looking around looking behind him kind of acting just erratic making sure no one's following him before Lars could fly back to Germany he had to get an okay from the airport doctor that his ear was better that it wouldn't cause permanent damage if he did fly and the pressure changed all of that so he was actually making his way to the doctor's office at this time Dr. Costa Kostov reported that Lars's behavior was very nervous and erratic during his visit. After the checkup, the doctor gave him the okay to fly back. He was totally fine to get back on the plane and return home to Germany. But Lars refused to leave the office. He was very doubtful about the medicine that had been prescribed to him for some reason. And while they were talking it through, the doctor was pretty much reassuring him that it was okay to take the medicine. A construction worker walked inside the office. Now this was very normal because because there was construction work going on at the airport and I'm sure the construction worker either got hurt or something happened, you know, and he had to come see the doctor. It was at this point that Lars began to noticeably tremble. He then yelled, I don't want to die here. I have to get out of here. And then he fled the office running as if somebody was chasing him. He was so scared that he left everything, everything. He left his cell phone, his luggage, his wallet, and his passport. These are obviously extremely essential items, especially when you're in a foreign country. Very, very essential items. You couldn't pay me a million dollars to leave these items behind in a foreign country. Just based off of this alone, we know that whatever Lars was going through, he really believed it. I really do genuinely think that he was having paranoid delusions and he genuinely was terrified. There's footage of Lars running through the airport, running from the terminal, out of the airport,
and to a particular spot on a fence. He then climbs the fence and jumps over. He then runs through a meadow and into a forest near the Bulgaria National Highway A2. These were his last ever confirmed whereabouts. It was after this that a search began. This area was searched with drones, it was searched with cadaver dogs, and both of those led to absolutely nothing. His mother hired a private investigator who contacted hospitals and homeless shelters. This also led to nothing. He then contacted the hospitals looking for patients who had no identification. This also led to nothing. He even traveled to Varna to hang up tons of missing person flyers. A few sightings were recorded, but nothing was ever confirmed, and if something was tracked down, it typically was a dead end. Years later, around 2019, there were two separate truck drivers who claimed that they had seen Lars and even given him a ride. They reported that this was an older version of him. Again, this led to nothing. There's even been posts all over the internet of people claiming that different homeless people or just different people are Varna and whenever these people are tracked down, it's always someone else. It's never Lars. Now, there are a few theories out there about what happened. Some think that Lars just wanted to start fresh, that he wanted to leave his old life behind and have a new identity. I don't believe this theory at all because he had no real reason to. He had a long-term girlfriend, a good job. He had family members that were currently sick and that he was helping out. Plus, this was a very elaborate way to make a new identity. He didn't have to put on this like insane act and I just think that that is too much of an act to put on. And also, I feel like he would know that that would become a really big media thing and that would kind of do the opposite if he was just trying to disappear and become a new person. That's why I think that's not a credited theory in my eyes. Another one is that he got trafficked. I also also don't necessarily believe this theory. The theory that most people believe is that he was suffering from a super, super rare side effect of the antibiotic that he was on. This drug was making him extremely paranoid. It was basically making him lose his mind. I did a little bit of research on the drug Cefrazil and nothing that I ever saw said that paranoia or psychosis could be an adverse side effect of this antibiotic. I mean, literally nothing. I couldn't find a thing supporting that. Not to say that it couldn't have done that. I'm not someone who knows anything about science. Regardless, it definitely was not a common side effect at all. Not only that, the doctor himself had reported that Lars was not on the medicine. He hadn't, he hadn't even filled out the procedure prescription because he was so scared to take it. That's why he was in the office for so long. He was so doubtful about taking the medicine. The doctor doesn't believe this theory that the medicine made him paranoid. The theory that I personally lean to is explained perfectly in this comment left under that chapter's coverage of this case. As a neuropsychologist, I've dealt with many cases similar to Lars. I have a feeling that he may have had some injury to a region of the brain called the amygdala, which is in charge of the emotional processing, especially that of fear and aggression. Now, because it works in tandem with the limbic system and receives input via auditory, visual, and olfactory senses, it is possible that he had delusions related to an inability to code stimuli from the temporal lobe. So think of it this way. The amygdala has a great role to play in behavioral slash emotional response to stressors and governs over survival in stress. If there is an injury by proxy to that area, a general practitioner will not be able to discern that, as we call that the amygdala hijack, and it is common in patients with PTSD. That means that his ability to process real threats is markedly skewed. Therefore, he will automatically go into panic mode, and with the increased adrenaline being processed, he would easily be able to climb a barbed wire fence with little to no perception of the pain incurred by doing so. By placing himself in an isolated location like the woods, the brain will enter into a factitious state where its stimuli will automatically be deemed as fear-inducing. The sad fact to this is evident in the CC footage, where he was shown in hyperactive mode. I think he may have suffered PTSD from the fight, and because general practitioners are not psych specialists, his symptoms went unchecked. That began the spiral into madness with the amygdala hijack, and with him being untreated, odds are he may have lost a sense of his own natural identity and regret greatly in his cognitive functionality. I think that this is an extremely intelligent take and theory on the entire situation. The idea that he suffered
suffered some sort of brain damage that caused him to basically spiral, regress, and lose cognitive functionality. It just seems to be the theory that makes the most sense to me. I think the fact that he was completely alone with no friends, he had been through some really scary experiences that may have caused PTSD. The fact that he was all alone in this hotel room in a foreign country all worsened this. Not to mention that he obviously had no sleep the night before and he was reported not eating very well during the trip. I think this all just like a recipe of very specific coincidences that happened that basically made him lose his mind. That's my theory. I would just like to thank this commenter Krista Joy. I appreciate that they were willing to give that take on it. It definitely helped me understand this case more. I haven't seen that theory put out pretty much anywhere else except in that comment. I saw that and immediately was like, that just makes so much sense to me. I think it is very plausible that he had some sort of mental break, which eventually caused him to have severe cognitive damage and eventually forgot his past or maybe in general completely lost track of reality. His mother believes that he is still alive. She also believes that he possibly has lost his memory completely. He would be 37 years old right now. He also would be 5 foot 11 or 180 centimeters. I definitely hope that in some way he is found so we can bring some sort of closure to his family. And yeah, there's really not much else to say about this case. Um, thank you so much for watching. My thoughts and prayers go out to his family and that he's able to be found in one way or another. Be kind in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm trying to get in the algorithm. I'm building my channel back up from essentially nothing. So it would be very beneficial to me if you were able to make my dreams come true by interacting with this video. I will continue to post consistent uploads about whatever. If you want me to cover a case or just have commentary on any sort of subject, comment that down below. I love suggestions. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe.